The federal government was supposed to redistribute $660 billion, and the Washington Post said it did some of it wrong. I'm Scott Ott with Stephen Green and Bill Whittle, and this episode of Right Angles brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. Gentlemen, I know most conservatives would not be shocked that there was a government program that misappropriated money, but apparently the Washington Post is shocked, stunned, and uh, just in an absolute uh, sense of awe that the federal government could have possibly botched this. I'm not sure that they botched it, but here's the upshot of it. Uh, they were supposed to distribute some $660 billion in small business relief funds in the so-called uh, Paycheck Protection Program that was supposed to address the business shutdown uh, challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the main complaints in the Washington Post article seem to be, Stephen Green, that the wrong people got the money. In other words, it wasn't desperately needy uh, small businesses, but it was that large businesses got it, that members of Congress who have businesses or whose families have businesses receive some of these funds. In fact, if you were to read this, Stephen, it doesn't appear to me in this story under the headline, Treasury SBA data show small business loans went to private equity backed chains and members of Congress. It doesn't seem like anybody who should have gotten one of these loans actually did <laughs> and that it did any good. Is it possible that things are so bleak at the place where democracy dies in darkness? <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to remember, as I said before the show, democracy dies in darkness is not a warning from the Washington Post. It's their mission statement. This is <laughs> what they do. This is our commitment to you. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is indeed. Uh, you know, here's the thing. I really stopped beating our spending problem our addiction to debt and spending. I, I, I beat that horse to death. I kept beating it. I lost readers beating it. It's it to me it's the most important issue in the world. If I, if if I had a time machine and I could take you back to about 2003 or 2004, you would find out that uh, vodkapundit.com, the old home for my blog, was the number one search result for spendthrift Republican Congress. So I've been I've been I've been doing this against I've been beating this dead horse when Republicans were trying to saddle it. I was beating it when Democrats tried to saddle it. Um, I just I, I just I went off for years on this under two administrations. Well, one and a half administrations. By the time we got to Obama's second term, I'd given up. Um, we have a problem. It's going to end very badly. But we're not there yet. What I, what, I, what I will be able to do someday is, if, you know, if this happens on my watch is go back to all my previous stuff and say, I told you so. But in the meantime, I've just given up. Readers don't care. They just don't. I, you know, I talked about the stuff at Tea Party rallies and people's eyes glazed over. And this, this was at Tea Party rallies. So when I read about a, you know, a nearly trillion dollar program where uh, the left is complaining because Republicans took the money and Republicans are complaining because groups like Media Matters took the money. Well, then uh, probably the thing is, awful as it was, is working more or less as, as intended. And when I say working as intended, I don't mean the press releases. I mean the way Congress intended it. Yeah, we are going to get all this money out there. You know, we've got an excuse to spend. We're not going to waste that. Now, theoretically, uh, Bill Whittle, the program is administered at the local bank uh, level and backed by the Small Business Administration. And so uh, many of these loans, uh, one would hope, will be repaid, although there are provisions for forgiveness of the loan if you use the money in order to keep uh, employees on the payroll or to pay rent or, or some other kinds of characteristics or things that you could do with the money. Uh, but one of the other things that the Washington Post seems upset about is some 90,000 of these loan applications, uh, the people who filled out the application either left the space blank where they were asked how many uh, jobs this would preserve or protect, um, or they filled in zero. About half of them said zero jobs will be preserved and still they were granted uh, this loan money. Um, Bill, do you think that the market is smart enough to figure out how to work even when the federal government intervenes in this heavy handed way? Um, or would you rather have seen the administration and Congress do things differently? Well, first of all, this the market's got nothing to do with this. This is the federal government. This is a program. Um, this is not uh, chest thumping on my part, but just to give you an idea of, of how this thing actually works, I got a notification from our bank saying that we could go down, apply for a loan, 
uh, just basically said fill in a number, uh, and then there would be no interest on the loan and repay w- within whatever. And it said, but if this money is spent on rent or employees, we have rent and employees, then essentially it's a gift. It's, it's not required to give it back. And that is an attractive offer and one that we needed very badly and one that I declined only because our revenues have not been – our ability to do our jobs has not been uh, uh, curtailed by the coronavirus. Yeah. And and taking advantage of that to me seemed, seemed wrong. Yeah. Um, but when you hear stories about uh, like this law uh, law firm that was that that, that some large uh, funders, Democratic supporters put together to defend Harvey Weinstein, uh, taking three million dollars uh, on re- they have revenues of four hundred million dollars. You hear things like this, and you know what you know what your first thought is. Your first my my, my first thought my first thought is you bastards. My second <laughs> thought is this is why we have. This is what our government system is all about, is the assumption that people will do the smart thing rather than the right thing. Now, a a society needs to protect itself against people who do the smart thing rather than the right thing. And there clearly should have been some kind of a financial cap because this this money was and remains essential to small business owners, absolutely essential to them. They have payroll, they have rent, they have food, all of it. And, and this money was designed to go to, to companies so that they could keep their doors open and pay their employees because they simply didn't have the cash reserves. And when you find things like airlines uh, getting huge bailouts, hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars, while they sit on stock that they bought for themselves, which they could liquidate if they wanted to and sell and, and, and keep the company afloat that way, then you start to feel like a chump. And and it's a, it's just another one of these things that makes you cynical, Scott. It's like, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. Certainly, certainly this bill should have been much clearer in terms of what, who qualified. Uh, but I think it was absolutely necessary. And as Steve pointed out on our backstage show, and as I pointed out before the coronavirus, when we were talking about Trump, um, uh, putting in place tariffs against farmers, if the government is going to intervene in your ability to do business and basically require you by law to go out of business, then this is not a handout. This is, and this is not a reward for failure. This is, this is a, a form of, of, of recompense that, that is designed to try to make you whole. Um, and so there, you know, there it is. I think, I think, I think it says a lot about a company that has $400 million of revenue and applies for and receives $3 million to help pay their attorneys. Um, it, but at the same time, as a person who believes in, um, in the rule of law and the understanding that people are corrupt, that opportunity should not have been given to them. I, I, I should not be dependent on their morality. Businesses are not charities and they're not moral op- operations. A business is designed to achieve a goal and return maximum uh, value to the shareholders. And this is a way of it doing that. And looking for corporations to be either moral or immoral means you don't understand what a business is. It simply should have been in the legislation to prevent this kind of abuse. But yeah, otherwise, I think it was definitely necessary. And and, and as far as what Steve said about spending, Scott, I, I think we're way past the point of ever repaying this debt. I think the only thing that matters now is are the payments on the debt being made? I think the whole thing comes to an end when the payments on the debt cannot be serviced anymore. Well, as it turns out, even America's leading abortion retailer, Planned Parenthood, got some $600 million for 43 locations of that business. $600 um, million. A bunch of Republican legislators called for an investigation of that, and the SBA demanded the money back. It is unclear whether Planned Parenthood has sent the money back or not. Um, some other major businesses, when they were outed as having taken these loans, actually did send the money back. Um, it, to me, overall, this just kind of illustrates 
the, the, the idea that government can somehow control things from a central location and decide how to press the right buttons and pull the right levers and turn the right knobs to dial in that uh, ideal economy or to deal with the consequences of a, a recession or a depression or a crisis like this. Uh, these people are not equipped to handle this. Now, I agree with Bill uh, in the sense that I think Steve had mentioned during our backstage show, which is available to members at BillWhittle.com, um, that in a way, this is like eminent domain. I mean, if you take a, somebody's property by eminent domain, you're obligated, the government is obligated to pay fair market value for that property. So if you shut down somebody's business because of a government decision to do so, no matter how wise or unwise you think that decision is, then it's not altogether unreasonable to expect the government to make some compensation for that. And so, it, it, and probably the loan idea is the least harmful way of doing that, even if it's a forgivable loan, uh, that money is going to get channeled back to the taxpayers anyway. Nevertheless, the Washington Post and others who are reporting this as if somehow wealthy businesses and fat cats on Wall Street were taking this money and that in some way deprived the average small business from getting it, uh, the same Washington Post who was alleging this buried way down in the story the fact that there's still $130 billion left over in this fund and that they're trying to figure out how to spend it. That they want to, they're, they're, so there's more money. It's not like- I almost the, raised my hand. It's not like the big equity capital companies or the big Wall Street firms sucked up all the money or the big law firms sucked up all this money and and you know Joe Sixpack and his mom and pop shop on Main Street in America was unable to get their, their small business loan. That was not the case. And like I said, I would have loved to have seen a story from the Washington Post where at least one Democrat who took the money would have been mentioned, and maybe maybe even one small business that was able to keep paying its employees through this crisis, rather than make it seem like the entire program, hundreds of thousands of loans, only went to fat cats who didn't need the money. It's just another episode of Scott Ott's What I Hate About Modern Journalism. <laughs> but, but I think we need to be reminded of this and the fact that when you read a story, as Bill has said before, you're seeing what they put in the inside the frame and we need to think about what's outside the frame. Where are the success stories? Where are the Democrats? Where, you know, where is the accountability and what were they expecting? And I'll finish with this. If the Washington Post is so concerned now that a government program that redistributes money might have corruption and the money might have gone to the wrong people, where have they been on entitlement programs for the past 60 years? For Bill Whittle and Stephen Green, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible. 